Good morning. How is everyone? Great. Uh, the only announcement I noticed the earlier in Kensington was that the People's Cemetery was not having their annual service because of still being involved with COVID. Um, but you can certainly leave, uh, send any donations and contact David Hunter there. Is there anything else you wish to share with one another? I hear, I hear Allison is doing well, so I think our prayers are working. He's back to work, so hopefully you'll get to see him next Sunday. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds as we come before God this morning. You have called us in love, O oh God, to be your children. May we remember this love when we feel unloved. May we practice this love when others rely on us. You, O oh God, are love. So may we be love in you. Amen. We will sing an awesome God. to worship read responsively holy God you call us to worship in your presence we seek truth and forgiveness holy God you call us to worship you in your presence we seek the grace to forgive one another holy God you call us to worship you heart body mind and soul so we gather to offer you our prayer and praise with joyful thanks. The first hymn, he's got the whole world in his hands. Seated. 
People of God, what do we do? We see God moving amongst us. What do we hear? We hear the good news of redemption for all. What do we perceive? We perceive God's will to honor the weak and stand with the poor. People of God, what do we know? We know God is with us always. So what shall we do? We will do justice. Our opening prayer, faithful God, in the world of your creation, you made the seasons to change, the sun to shine and the rain to fall, the vines to bear fruit and the fields to produce good things. You alone are our strength and security. You alone bring us rest and comfort. We turn to you as the source of all life, marveling at your wisdom, seeking to learn your purpose for our lives. We offer you our praise and thanksgiving, for you are the God who made us, the Christ who mends us, and the Spirit who brings us life. Together, faithful God, even though we know you are the source of our lives, we confess we often turn our backs on you and think in ways that deny our loyalty and love for you. We ignore our own needs and the needs of others. We harbor anger and say things that cause others pain. In your mercy, restore us to right relationships with you and with one another. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come away from what has left you wallowing in hopelessness. Yes, there are stormy times, but those times will not last forever. Flowers will reappear on the earth. The time of singing will come again. And in Jesus Christ, our sin is forgiven. Be at peace with God, with yourself, and with one another. Amen. Our next hymn, Jesus' Hands Were Kind Hands. for the response of reading. O Lord, who may abide in your tent? Who may dwell in your holy hill? And do what is right, and speak the truth from their heart. Who do not slander with their tongue, and do no evil to their friends, nor take up a reproach against their neighbors in whose eyes the wicked are despised, but who honor those who fear the Lord, who stand by their oath even to their hurt, who do not lend money at interest, and do not take a bribe against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be moved. The Gospel according to James, chapter 1, verses 17 to 27. 
Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and persevere, being not hearers who forget but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any, th if any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion is that is pure and undefiled before God the Father, is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. This is the word of the Lord.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to God Almighty, today and forever. Amen. Before I start my joyful sermon, Linda shared a, an experience she had this past week with me, and I'll let her tell you. But it led me to, believe, to, uh, f to share a joke. There was a preacher out on the ocean, and he fell in the water. He was all alone, and he could hardly swim. A boat came along shortly after and offered him help. He said, no, thank you. God will save me. A few moments later, another boat came with fishermen. They offered to help. No, thank you. God will help me. Within a short time, the preacher drowned. He made it to heaven, and he looked at God and he said, I thought you would have helped me. He said, My son, I sent you two boats. <laughs> I'm not going to totally focus on the Gospel of James, but it is actually intertwined with the sermon. I am focusing this morning simply on the word joy. Something we don't focus enough on as far as I'm concerned. So here's a little story to start my sermon. Picture this, a man working in New York City doing a very stressful marketing job. He was asked to take three days off, spend time amongst the people in the city, and ask them questions about certain products. It had been cold and wet in the city for the past week as a cold winter storm had been blowing through. And then the first day when the man woke up on his three days off, he awoke to bright sunny skies. As he was getting ready, he reached in his pants pocket and found a $100 bill. As he was walking out enjoying the sun sh sunshine in Central Park, he stops at a hot dog stand for lunch. The vendor had run out of change, so he said, I have this lottery ticket, and if I win, I will split half of it with you. Later that day, as he's talking amongst the people, he meets what he considers a beautiful woman. She asks him to escort her to a dinner that evening. When the woman arrived to pick him up, she was in a stretched limousine. She was a queen of one of the smaller European cities on her way to a dinner at the United Nations with the president. As they're driving to the dinner, there's a television in the car. He flips it on to get the lottery numbers. The grand prize, $35 million. As he arrives on his first day off at the nicest hotel in New York, a beautiful queen on his arm, now realizing he just won the lottery. Sometimes life is good. Sometimes we do feel like we're walking on cloud nine. And our emotion can be classified as nothing but pure joy. Life is not always a negative experience. We have all had those days where everything actually does go right. And we're in a good mood, full of happiness and full of life. And you think to yourself, wow, I am just glad to be alive to enjoy this moment. Even though joy is a good emotion, it doesn't mean that there's a right and wrong way to deal with it. Life can be joyous. And we should not feel bad when we get to celebrate. We must celebrate and shout for joy, but we need to remember that joy is a gift. It's a gift from our God. And God wants us to make sure that we stay living with joy and using this gift for the good of others. 
Now there's a couple of steps we should really follow so we don't waste this joy. Number one, we should give credit where credit is due. And that simply means remembering where joy comes from. Remembering that joy is a gift. And don't you think it would be important to give credit to our Lord and Savior? The Bible says in James chapter 1, Every good gift and every perfect present comes from heaven. It comes down from God. Circle the words when you go home. Good gift from God. Joy is a gift from God. God wants us to have a good time on earth. God gave us five senses so that we can feel, smell, and see things that give us joy. In fact, he even gave us the emotional capability to experience joy and happiness. If God wanted you to have a bad time here on earth, don't you think he would have taken away your senses and only given you the ability to experience stress, heartbreak, and fear? But he loves us. God loves us. He gets excited when he sees us having a good time. And it gives him great joy to bless you and me with joy. You thrill me, Lord, with all you have done for me. I sing for joy because of what you have done. Now on my way here from Kensington, I was thinking of a song that the lady sang in my church as a child. And it was simply, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. It is where we get all of our hope our courage, and the ability to share these gifts with God and everybody around us. Now God offers us a chance to live with Him forever one day in what the Bible calls paradise, a place with no pain, no sorrow, no suffering, constant joy, a joy with God, the entire universe forever. This joy, however, was made possible through what? Through Jesus Christ suffering on the cross. God sent us His only Son. He came as a human being to live a perfect life. A life that He then traded for that death on a cross. When Jesus did this, He made a way for us to have that relationship, to have that joy with God. No matter what ending, no matter where we are, no matter who we are, no matter what we have done. There was a man from the third century who penned these words to a friend. It's a bad, bad world, incredibly bad. But I have discovered in the midst of it a quiet, and holy people who have learned a great secret. They found a joy which is a thousand times better than any pleasure of a sinful life. They are despised and persecuted, but they care not. They are masters of their souls. They have overcome the world. These people are Christians. Now, you and I, we don't know that experience because things have come to where we are. We have a glorious and wonderful freedom. We experience sadness. We experience grief and anger. But above all, we experience joy, happiness. And all of this joy is open to you if you accept God's gift of salvation. And we have no joy unless God smiles down on us and says, I love you so much. Here, have fun with this. 
I turn to Psalm 9. It says, I will be filled with joy because of you. I will sing praises to your name. We can live life having a joyful moment here or there. But to be filled with joy and living with joy, we must give credit for all of our joy to God. I read of a story this week when I was preparing my sermon. And this older gentleman recalled his days in the playground at his school. One day in particular, he was wearing his favorite shirt. It was Friday, and they were heading into a three-day weekend. Kind of a cool, it was kind of cool out, but the sun was beating down brightly, warming as he stood on the playground. He was on top of the monkey bars, feeling on top of the world. Then he noticed a girl. And on top of that world, when all of the girls were amazed by his monkey bars and Spider-Man climbing skills, all of a sudden, he felt a push off the bars. He fell some 20 feet, landed very hard on the last bar, all of his weight on his right thigh. Now instead of spending the weekend playing and having fun, he was flat on his back getting a, CA, a CAT scan. And this point is that we need to enjoy the good times while we can. Nothing is guaranteed. Nothing is certain other than you know. Life is not always going to leave us feeling on top of the world. There are reasons and seasons to life. Some good, some not so good. The Bible says, enjoy prosperity while you can. But when hard times strike, realize that both come from God. You will realize that nothing is certain in this life. So says in the book of Ecclesiastes. When God gives you a gift with a joyful time in life, enjoy it. He has given you a gift, and it would be wrong not to enjoy it to its fullest. How many times have you walked down the street, walked through your neighborhood, saw somebody, you smile and say hello, and they do nothing? What do you think? Well, that's the last time saying hi to him. Why should I smile at her? Wrong attitude. When we give a gift, we are giving a gift without expecting anything in return. And I guarantee, science, the Bible, guarantees that if you share that joy, whether you receive anything in return or not, you will still experience that great and wonderful joy by simply smiling at someone you're passing by. When God gives you a gift like a joyful time in life, enjoy it. When you do this, when you enjoy the good times and when you give God credit, it will motivate you to, to do the final key and be living with joy. And the final key I want to share with you, share your joy with others. Another famous writer said, it must be said that we can have joy and therefore will have it only as we give it to others. There may be cases where a man or woman can be really merry in isolation, but these are exceptional and dangerous. When we have joy, we're in the middle of God's gift. And we need to pass it on to others. What's the song say? Keep smiling and the world will smile with you. God has given you a gift and now he wants you to share it. 
when we share those joy and those gifts, God is ultimately the key to living with joy. John chapter 15 says, When you obey me, you remain in my love. I have told you this so that you will be filled with joy. And yes, your joy will overflow. If you need this joy in your life, the joy that only God can bring in your life, it's through the gift of salvation. And you are certainly in the right place this morning. But you're also heading out into the right place. You are heading out into the world to share the joy and to share God's gift. God has done it all for us to be living with joy if you only accept the gift. Amen. We come before God now bowing our heads in prayer. God whose word created us, we give you thanks for the abundance we enjoy from earth's goodness. Make us wise caretakers of the earth's fragile balance. May your world become a place of abundance for all creatures and all those lives that depend on you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of transforming love, we are grateful to live in a land which is mostly peaceful, with leaders accountable for their decisions. We pray for those who suffer from burdens of racism, violence, and greed in our communities and in many other nations. Open hearts and minds to recognize abuse and exploitation. Help us build a common life where all people will find dignity in their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of all times and places, as our summer moves toward the autumn and activities must reorganize while the coronavirus is still present, we pray for families who face decisions about schooling, churches and organizations trying to make wise choices. Equip all of us with the wisdom we need to plan well and act with understanding for those eager to get things going and for those anxious and reluctant to move too quickly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. What will you require of us, O God? We will do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. As we take a moment to realize and the dedication of our gifts, we thank God for yet more gifts and more joy. These gifts are another way in which you can be, we can be, God's love in the world and we give all of our gifts unreservedly amen our final hymn to god be the glory
luckily for my wife, I won't be able to say too much when I get home. Thank you all so much for your gifts, sharing them with me. Thank you for the opportunity to share my gifts with you. And we thank the Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for each and every gift. May the Lord bless us and keep us as we draw closer to Jesus. We pray that he would fill our hearts with love and joy. Keep us rejoicing in the Lord and in the power of his might, so that we may be strengthened in the inner man, inner person, equipped to do your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.